to go ahead and share my screen. Just a reminder um, that Lisa is recording this meeting so we can post it for those that are unable to attend with us in person right now. Uh, so if you're joining us at a later moment, hi and welcome to our district family engagement meeting for February. My name is Julie Ruzek. I'm the coordinator of family and community partnerships. I work very closely with Melissa Brandt. Um, almost too closely. She can read my mind and I can read hers a lot of times, but that's a good thing. Um, she is gone today and so I'm facilitating this meeting and I'm happy to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then in just a moment we're going to um, turn it over to our guest, Laura Lenz. Please tell me if this worked. think. Are you able? Could someone give me a heads up if you're able to see our screen? I cannot see you. We can see it, Julie. I wonder if you want to push um, like the present button on it so yes. it's a little bit bigger. Okay. I will do that. I just wanted to make sure you could see it. Great. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Melissa also keyed me into a new um, website where you can find graphics for your slides called slidesgo.com. If you have not seen that yet, it's wonderful. And they have all sorts of really cool um, slide presentations ready to go for you. So check that out. We already did our grounding, so I'm going to skip to the next one, um, which is one of our favorite things at Family Engagement, a chance for you all to talk a little bit about uh, the amazing things that are happening uh, with you in your family, at your site, or the sites that you work with or represent. So I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes, and if we have any anyone out there uh, in virtual land that would like to share uh, an exciting, positive, and or meaningful thing or things that are happening with you. What do we have out there? All right, this is Lucy, I'll go. <laughs> um, yesterday I was able to renew my driver's license and be able to drive for another year because of the <laughs> visa application for Canadians versus America. It was a very stressful week because um, on the 12th of February is when it was going to expire. So me not driving means not sweeting and not doing things. <laughs> I would go yeah. bonk. So, yay, driver's license. Yay. That's no great, person. Lucy. And anyone that's been to the DOT recently, especially with the real ID, it is, it's, it's a process. So I can only imagine the extra steps it took for you, Lucy. I'm glad you have that license. Yeah, peace of mind as well. Totally. There's got to be one or two other things out there. I'll just share that I just, it's not like for me, but for my building, it's been so incredible to just see the staff and everything that all the teachers have gone through this year and the transition back to hybrid and just how everybody's diving in and supporting one another. And, you know, we've been through it this year and our families have gone through it this year. And it's just like warm fuzzies to see the support within our buildings among staff to just, you know, do what we need to do. And so it's been really nice to see. Thank you, Leah. And, you know, kudos to you too. I noticed I've been trying to take a break from Facebook, but I did pop on the other day just to roam around a little bit. And I noticed that you were reaching out publicly to, to thank your colleagues. And that is just a really beautiful thing to do. So thanks for sharing that with them too. Um, it's nice every once in a while, especially lately to hear those positive things. So thank you for being a shining light. Hi, this is Rachel, and um, my son is a fifth grader at Washington, but he's at Riverside for distance learning this year. And it's been really nice over the last few weeks, he's received postcards from several of the staff members at Washington. And that's really been like a highlight in our household. That's awesome, Rachel. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I think, um, 
Melissa and I have spent a lot of time talking about this and then we're involved in, in lots of planning groups too for summer programming and other other groups. And one of the things that not only Melissa and I, but our, our leadership colleagues and other colleagues have commented on is the strength of our partnerships with families has never been stronger for the most part. You know, there are still some that we're working on, but our, our partnerships with our families and, and our staff really getting to know our families and, and stepping outside of our buildings to connect with our families has been a really beautiful and positive, positive thing. And Rachel, I'm so glad that you're feeling that too. That's great. Maybe one more. Um, I'll chime in here. My name is Susan and I have a fourth grader who is assigned to Bamber, but is actually a uh, distant learning at Riverside this year. And this is just, and I think Mrs. Ruzek, um, you did a special um, virtual field trip. You came and spoke with them while you were at the, I did. You were at the dentist with the kids. But anyway, <laughs> yes. But I just wanted a huge shout out to Riverside. Um, when we first started, you know, coming from Bamber, we didn't know anyone. And my son now is begging to go to Riverside. All the staff, <laughs> Mr. Miguel, Miss Baines. It's um, Ms. Schmidt and Mrs. Shaw, who are his two reading and math teachers. Just we are blown away with how well everything has gone. Um, I think his education is just is exceeding. They meet one on one with him. They're going over things to challenge him. So I have anyone I can tell and Lucy knows because I keep telling her Riverside, wonderful, wonderful staff, the, everyone there, the teachers, they go above and beyond. So, and I know you're connected also to that school. So please keep sharing. Uh, we have such, had such a positive experience. We've only been in Minnesota about three years. So um, it's just Riverside. We are just, I, if I could send him there logistically, uh, he would go next year for fifth grade. So thank you so much. Thank all of them for all they're doing. We've had, you know, uh, the assistant principal drop off a recorder. We've had ever, so many people check in. So many people go above and beyond with coding class and drawing club and just everything. So I cannot sing Riverside praises enough because we are just we just love them. And if somehow I can figure out how to get him there next year, like he might go there just because he's he's had such a great time. So I just wanted to chime in and just thank Riverside. They've done such a phenomenal job with this whole challenging distant learning. And it's been such a positive experience. Thank you, Susan. That is awesome. That's really kind. And it's it's so nice, truly, to hear um, from our families um, and from our families that are having some positive experiences and really feeling the love from our teachers and leaders and support staff, because Leah was right. Um, our colleagues are working really hard, really hard right now across the district. And um, we don't always see that in the media, that, that part of the job, but um, everyone has, you know, it's 11 months. I woke up this morning when I was preparing for today and realized like, here we are almost a year. It's been 11 months of lots of change and lots of people working really hard, trying to connect with um, our kids and our families and each other in a different way. And boy, it's hard, but there has been some, uh, some silver linings. So thank you, Susan, very much. Huh, wow, awesome. Um, let's move on uh, to, let's see here. Where am I at? I'm gonna present again. Julie, there's messages on the um, chat oh, too. I'm so. terrible at monitoring the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lucy. Oh, and we've got Lita here from Riverside. So Lita, please, if you would um, bring those uh, positive messages back to your colleague. That I'm doing great. it right now. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. It's like, you know, it's just lovely to hear and we, we see it here, um, but it's really, really, really powerful to hear from a from a parent. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's really a um, a little bit of an encouragement to all of us to maybe take some time today, if you have a few minutes, and just send a quick little positive note to someone that has positively impacted you in the last week, month, eleven months. It really keeps us motivated and helps us keep moving forward. So. That just really, honestly, I wasn't prepared for that and was a great way to start our meeting. Um, I'll keep trying to check out the chat, especially as Laura is presenting here today too. Um, let me go back to present. So um, this meeting, if this is your first time, oops, 
this is your first time, welcome. Uh, we are so glad that you're here and hope that you come back. And if you're unable, just know that this meeting is being recorded and you can watch it anytime. You can also share with your friends. Um, family engagement is our opportunity to connect with our families. And obviously this isn't uh, our ideal way of connecting, but we have, have found some positives to this format as well. And being able to record and share this at other times is one of those. So feel free to, to engage in today that however you want to. And sometimes that just means I'm going to have it on in the background while I catch up on some email or change the dishes from dirty to clean. We are fine with that. So whatever is most comfortable with you is what works for us. If um, you have to step away, feel free to turn your camera off. That's fine. And um, stand up, take a break if you need to. And then like most of us have um, finally learned, if you are not talking, if you would please mute your microphone, that is helpful. And now the uh, piece de resistance. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, my friend and colleague is here, Laura Lenz, to talk to us about mindfulness. And if you were with us last month, month uh, Melissa shared a brief clip of Laura taking us through one mindfulness practice. And after that, uh, Melissa thought it would be really helpful for us to understand a little bit more about mindfulness, why mindfulness, uh, a little bit more about Laura and her journey uh, to learn more about mindfulness. And so we have Laura with us today. And Laura's going to just um, take over here and lead us through the next 30-ish uh, minutes of digging into mindfulness a little bit. So welcome, Laura, and thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone. You can go to the next slide, Julie. I'm just going to warn you that I have an extra dog in my household this morning, so I'm just trying to manage three pets, and I think it'll be okay. Um, so I'm I'm really honored to be here, and I, I love talking about mindfulness, um, any chance I can get. So I just want to let you know a little bit about myself, just to kind of orient and um, frame why I'm here and what I'm talking about. And by the way, I'm really happy to um, have questions throughout. I'm hoping to have time for questions at the end and comments and thoughts and ideas, but um, definitely if something is on your mind in the moment, please put it in the chat or raise your hand or unmute. Um, and I'm really happy to get into it. So um, as Julie said, I'm Laura Lenz and um, that's my family on the left. Um, my husband is a principal at Dover Yoda High School and um, my son is a college student and my daughter is a senior at Mayo. They both came up through the Rochester Public School System through Franklin, Montessori at Franklin, Friedel, and Mayo. So um, I've had kids in the district and my daughter, this is her last year in the district. Um, and then if we move over to the picture on the right and some beautiful students of mine, um, I've been a teacher for 26 years, 13 in this district, uh, mostly as an English learner teacher. That's a picture at the Newcomer Center at Kellogg where I taught for six years. And um, I'm currently working as um, a coach for new teachers um, in the um, graduate induction program. So I um, work with teachers at Riverside, um, Franklin, um, Gage Spanish Immersion, and Elton Hills. Um, when I was doing that job at the Newcomer Center is kind of the beginning of my mindfulness journey. I, I loved the job. I loved working with new refugees and immigrants to the country, helping them um, learn the language, learn the culture. But it was also extremely stressful. And I was finding myself at the edges of um, burnout. And I knew that if I was going to have longevity in this career, and stay in education, I needed to do something to take care of myself better. And mindfulness and meditation became one tool among many, um, but it really had a profound impact on my life. And after I started feeling different and experiencing life, 
Sorry. Oh, I don't know why that happened. Okay. <laughs> Experiencing some good changes. I thought about how could I bring this to students and other staff. And so began um, a lot of training with an organization called Mindful Schools. And they are really a leader in the country and even in the world on mindfulness and education. And so now I've done a lot of training with them about how to teach mindfulness to other educators and to students. And I'm just really interested in making this as accessible to people as possible. So that's kind of the, the, the long story short in a couple of minutes. So Julie, you want to go to the next one? So what I'm hoping to do, and I'm um, planning to present in 30 minutes or less, is just to spend a little time talking about what is mindfulness. And I'm sure a lot of you know, but kind of getting into what it is and what it isn't. Um, I'm going to lead you in a guided practice um, and then briefly discuss the benefits of mindfulness and offer some resources and then take any questions and comments. Okay, next. So. I'd like to just get sort of a level set of where the group is at. Um, when I started doing these kinds of trainings years ago, it, it was new to a lot of people, but now mindfulness has become um, very much a, a known thing in, in the community. So if in the chat you could just put um, on a scale of one to 10, your knowledge base with mindfulness, with one being completely new to the concept and 10 being extremely familiar with mindfulness. Um, you can put a little comment there if you want to, but just, just to give me a little bit of a gauge of where the, where the room is at and wherever you're at is fine. It's just, it's, you know, just kind of, yeah, great. Okay kind of a variety, a lot on the higher end. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that really helps a lot. Oh, great. Thanks, Lindy. Um, okay, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so we're going to get into defining mindfulness a little bit. Um, this is one of my favorite visuals. Um, as um, a parent or a teacher, we might think like, is my mind full or am I mindful? <laughs> so I would imagine that right at this very moment, all of us maybe are a little bit more like the figure on the left with like one million things going on in our head. And certainly um, COVID and all of the challenges of the past year have contributed to it. Whereas children often are really so adept at being mindful, thinking of one thing at a time, being in the moment. Um, yesterday, I was at Riverside with one of my residents and they were taking an indoor break and they were doing blocks and puzzles and they were all in, you know, and it's really like a beautiful example of mindfulness. Okay, next. So we're going to play this little video, see if it works. It's about three minutes, I think. Mm, I don't think, I don't think we have sound, do we? No sound? I don't think so. Okay. We can always move on to. Let me see if I can figure it out here. I can't pause. Okay. Those of you who use this more than I do, what do I need to do to get sound? Um. So you're unmuted. So if you so. go, if you go to um, the U YouTube site, you click on um, share a tab instead of share your screen. I don't know. Do you know how to do that? Because I, 
if you stop, I think I can do it. I just figured out how to do it the other day. How's this? Is it working? Mm -mm. I still don't have sound, but that's okay. <sighs> I'm sorry. That's, no, it's no problem. I'll I'll link no, it. What, what Missy was saying is right. It, it's like if you go back to the Google Meet and press stop um, sharing your screen. Okay. And then um, go back to, so press it again, like you're going to share, but instead of doing your entire screen, press, uh, click on only that tab, like just share the tab only. Okay. And then your YouTube video will show up under the little category under a tab. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the tabs, but is, is not, it not under there? It is not. Okay. The strict family that, engagement is the slides are. I Could I just click on the slides? Then can you go back to YouTube, find your video, and then come back to the meet? So yeah. stay, stay in <laughs> our meet. Um, how about you keep talking, Laura, and I will try to figure this out. Yeah, um, I think, could let me try, could I share my screen? Yes, please do. Okay, let's try that. Can you hear it? Yes. You may have heard this word mindfulness. Perfect. It's become Thank you, Laura. Something of a buzz phrase of late. So I'm going to give you one simple serviceable definition, which is this. Mindfulness is the ability to know what's happening in your head at any given moment without getting carried away by it. Imagine how useful this could be. Just as an example, driving down the road and somebody cuts you off in traffic. How do you normally react? I think most of us, we normally react by having a thought, which is, I'm pissed. And then what happens next? You immediately, habitually, reflexively inhabit that thought. You actually become pissed. There's no buffer between the stimulus and your reaction. With just a little bit of mindfulness, in that same situation, you might notice my chest is buzzing, my ears are turning red, I'm having a starburst of self-righteous thoughts, I'm getting angry. But you don't necessarily have to act on it and chase that person down the road, screaming at them with your kids in the back of the car thinking you've gone nuts. Now, you might be thinking, don't I need to get angry sometimes? Aren't I justified? I would say yes, but probably not as much as you think. The proposition here is not that you should be rendered by mindfulness into some lifeless, non-judgmental blob. The proposition is that you should learn how to respond wisely to things that happen to you rather than just reacting blindly. And that, my friends, is a superpower. How do you get it? The way to get it is through meditation. I believe that meditation and mindfulness are the next big public health revolution. In the 1940s, if you told somebody you were going running, they would have said, who's chasing you? But then what happened next? The scientists swooped in, they showed that physical exercise is really good for you, and now all of us do it, and if we don't, we feel guilty about it. And that's where I think we're headed with mindfulness and meditation. It's gonna join the pantheon of no-brainers like brushing your teeth, eating well, and taking the meds your doctor prescribed for you. Let me just close by saying, mindfulness is not gonna solve all of your problems. It's not gonna render your life a nonstop parade of unicorns and rainbows. Nonetheless, this is a superpower and one that is accessible by you immediately. Okay, thanks for watching that. I hope you enjoy it. I've shown that so many times, but I always get a kick out of it. So Julie, if you wanna, do you wanna present again? And in the meantime, I'm just wondering if you could put in the chat um, um, something that, that drew your attention in that video or maybe in the visual of the the child, like what what um, what caught your attention, or what resonated with you, or a question you have, or just something about you know what mindfulness is to you in general. If you could, we could just take a minute and put that in the chat. 
Sure, there is a question about where you received your mindfulness training. Oh yeah, through um, mindful schools. And you can, it's I, mostly I've done all of it online, um, but um, they make it very interactive and I've worked with small cohorts and I'll put that on the, um, the res it's on the resource list, so yeah. So I'm seeing that it's just as important as brushing your teeth. <laughs> yeah, I like that he shares it in easy to understand language too, keeps it simple. Um, being aware of physical responses in the body to stress. Yeah, getting cut off and driving is such a good example because we, almost all of us experience that. And you can keep adding thoughts as you have them or, yeah, it will not fix everything. It's a tool to practice. I really like that too. So whereas I found it extremely helpful in my life, it definitely, it's just one spoke of a well-being wheel, that's for sure. So if we look at just a few more definitions of what mindfulness is, um, really something that all of us are capable of from the very young up through the very old. It's really attention in the present moment, the opposite of autopilot, and it can help with emotional regulation. And I really like to think of it as practices that transfer to real life. So I might sit in my chair and do a guided practice every morning for five minutes to 30 minutes, but that's great. <laughs> but what matters is that what how that impacts the rest of my day, how I walk into the room, how I interact with children, how I react if somebody says something to me, if I'm if I'm getting angry, how do I communicate with my family? Um, how do I take care of myself? How do I notice I'm moving too fast? So yeah, it's really like the gym for real life. <laughs> Okay, the next one. So mindfulness is not clearing your mind. That's really not possible unless you're not with us any longer. Um, it's, it's not about never reflecting on the past. It's not about never planning for the future. Of course, we need to do these things. It's not about always being calm or in a state of bliss. Um, Mindfulness is about being aware of all your emotions and all the emotions are okay. For a while when I was first teaching this, I felt pressure to always walk around looking calm because when people would see me, they would say like, oh, I'm breathing, Laura, I'm breathing. And I'm like, that's great if I'm like a signal to remember to breathe. But like, I'm just regulated too sometimes. I'm just maybe getting a little bit better at catching myself. So, um, and again, not a silver bullet for all our problems. And it's also, and I think this point is important, but it's not, it's not something that just turns you into a doormat. So um, if you're interested in social justice or racial justice, um, mindfulness can inform that. It can, it can help you continue to be an activist and, but maybe do it in a way that, that reaches people um, and, and helps you stay regulated while, while you're doing it. So. Okay, we can go to the next one. So what I'd like to do now is just try a guided practice with you, if you're up for it. And um, I'd really encourage you, if it's more comfortable, to turn off your cameras. You don't have to. If you're comfortable leaving it on, that's, fi that's fine too. And I'm just going to guide you in a couple minute practice and when we're done, we'll just kind of reflect on how it was. So there's really no expectations. Um, you don't need to do this right. <laughs> You'll just have an experience and we'll just see how it is, okay? So um, I invite you to just maybe put things down if you can for a minute. And 
notice where you are in your seat and you can sit in a relaxed but comfortable position can stretch up the spine a little bit can notice your feet on the floor and even push your feet into the floor a bit if you're comfortable closing your eyes you can otherwise just take a soft gaze with your eyes We'll start with a few breaths, slowly inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. If you're feeling tired, you can focus a little bit more on making the inhale longer, which wakes up the nervous system. And if you're feeling stressed out or anxious, just lengthening that exhale, which really helps with regulating the nervous system. And we'll do a simple body scan. Starting at the top of your head, just noticing how your body feels. You feel tense or relaxed. So maybe softening the area around the eyes, softening the forehead, noticing the neck, noticing the shoulders, maybe giving a little roll to the shoulders if they're feeling tight. Scanning down the back, the chest and the stomach. Notice if there's tension. Scanning down the legs, all the way down to the feet and the toes. Taking a few more breaths. And just finishing with thinking of someone who's been really supportive of you lately, maybe imagining that person, how have they supported you, feeling gratitude for them. And taking a few more breaths together. And then blinking your eyes open if they were closed, maybe stretching a bit, coming back to the room. And thanks for trying that out, everybody. Um, you can put cameras back on if you want, or you can leave them off. Maybe I put a few of you to sleep, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, if you don't mind, um, it's always helpful when we do a mindful practice just to notice how it was for us. Um, so if you want to put in the chat or if you want to unmute, how was that for you? Did you notice anything about like how your body was feeling or about emotions? Um, and it's, I always tell kids when I do this, like, um, I'm not worried about you being respectful, but I tell them like to, you know, it's okay if it was boring, you can say that, or if it made you sleepy, or if you felt calm, it's just an experience. So, um, yeah, some, yes, sometimes we hold tension in places that we, we don't even realize. So, yeah, thank you, Julie. I just yawned a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very very self-conscious, but it was just my dog seeing me yawn, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxing tension in my neck, so I was able to stretch it. Very peaceful. Grounding. Great. Okay. So um, when, when we get trained with mindful schools, they 
they don't even let you take the training to teach students until you take a training just for your own well-being first, which at first I was like, come on, I want the training. I want to give it to the kids. <laughs> but I really came to respect that philosophy. And they have um, educators or whoever take a mindfulness 101 class first, because as you can see, there's we all know as parents and as educators, as humans, how much co-regulation matters, how much how our nervous system is affects the people in our lives. You know that when you walk into a room, you can sometimes feel the tension in the air or you can walk into a room and you can feel a calm sense or a happy sense. So how we show up every day for our students or for our kids is really step one before we say anything or teach them to do anything. It's just how our nervous system is. So our nervous system can be the biggest intervention and the most basic before any kind of mindfulness practice we might want to teach. Okay, next. The, um, the research is really starting to catch up on mindfulness too. Um, and there's, there's a link on that page if you want to go and, and read more about it. But um, I can put that for you. But some of the benefits for all of us adults and kids are improved attention, emotional regulation, greater compassion, and reduction of stress and anxiety. Um, I think there have been, there's been a lot more interest in mindfulness in the past year um, as COVID has hit. And um, we've experienced um, a lot of awakening to racial justice and equities that have always been around, but um, we've finally kind of woken up more to them. So mindfulness can really be a useful tool in dealing with all these things. Okay, next. So it's possible that some of you already have mindfulness practices, and I'd love to um, please share that in the chat if you have anything that you do. Um, there's a lot of movement practices that are really grounded in mindfulness as well, such as yoga and qigong and tai chi. Um, if this is something you're a little bit interested in, I suggest starting small. One minute counts. The, the practice we just did was only a couple of minutes, but it made me feel better. <laughs> so. 10 good breaths counts. Um, do it daily-ish. So if you skip a day, that's okay. Just try to come back to it. Um, I like to map out my day and I like to look for little bits of time where I can take 10 breaths or before I go to something where I usually get really um, activated or might be a little bit stressful, doing some practice before that. Um, and I will put that link to the resource page at the bottom and I'll put it in the chat. Let's see here. Um, but what it has is it has some recommendations if you're interested in this topic to explore further. Um, it lists, and probably some things that a lot of you are familiar with, but it lists some apps, um, some websites, especially for parents and for children. And it lists a couple books. Um, I have a lot more resources if you want more. So you can always email me and let me know. Um, can you go to the next slide, Julie? So I would just love to know if anyone has questions about anything regarding mindfulness or if you want to share something of your own that you found successful with your kids or your students or for yourself. Um, you know, I just, I keep talking about this right now in particular, because I think it's really important to name that we're going through an incredibly stressful moment in our time and things aren't normal. And I was just talking to my daughter about that this morning. And so um, I think it's important to name it. And mindfulness can be one thing that we do to try to take care of ourselves. Um, so I'm just wondering if anybody has comments or questions about personal practice, about things with kids. You can put it in the chat or you can just unmute. I 
I've seen you give this presentation before, Laura, and I'm grateful for it. So thank you for your time. Um, and I wonder if you could talk just a couple minutes more about the importance of um, of what you mentioned about um, learning mindfulness practices for yourself first, and then how we can, once we feel like we're ready to move on and, and work with students or our own children, what would you recommend for, for the next step? Yeah, thanks, Julie. Um, well, I think like a lot of things, I mean, you know, we wouldn't probably teach, try to teach a child to swim if we didn't know a lot about swimming, or we weren't able to do it, or we weren't able to get ourselves out of trouble if we got into trouble with swimming. And so mindfulness is simple, and yet there's a lot to it. And so being grounded in your personal practice, the, the best thing it's done for me is not only just help me be um, more stable, but it's just helped me be more comfortable leading practice and um, more authentic. And um, like, I don't, you know, it's fine to use a script, but when you can put things in your own words, people lead, lead mindfulness practices in all sorts of different ways with all sorts of different words. And it kind of, you kind of have to find what, what really resonates for you and makes, makes it, you know, sound um, impactful. So um, I just think it's really helpful to have some kind of base and it doesn't mean that you have to practice for X number of minutes a day, but just to have more the, the frequency and the ability. Um, and so I would always recommend that first for, for teachers because it will impact or parents, it will impact your, your parenting, um, just in slowing down and being a, attentive to your kids. Um, and then, you know, if you're interested in doing more, you know, the resource page I have has a lot of links to how, you know, you could, you know, do mindfulness with your kids on an app or, um, you know, bring it to students as well. But just really starting with yourself, I think, will give your, will give your kids or your, um, your students the best example of a teacher who's kind of embodied in that mindfulness if that makes sense. And I see some comments. Um, yeah, yes, Calm Classroom is a great resource and a great place to start. A lot of teachers are using that. It's like, it's, a, it's not a curriculum, but it's a set of mindfulness practices that could be instituted like one, two, or three times a day. Um, and just some breathing exercises in kid-friendly language. I mean, obviously we teach kids in a completely different way than what I just did with you. So we do things like, you know, butterfly breath and snake breath and things like that that make it really fun for them with a lot of motion too. Um, as far as the question, um, are there any schools in the district that have incorporated mindfulness time into their daily schedule for all students? Um, I, I can't with 100% certainty say yes to that. That's okay, um, Laura. That was my question. I was just mostly curious. Like, I know that you probably can't speak to all of those, but um, like what Susan replied back is kind of what I was wondering when I was... Um, when I was working in St. Paul, we had kind of made it um, like a practice that right after recess, that those five minutes, every, you know, every classroom held that space. So I was just curious how that worked. If yeah. That, I, so. Yeah. No, thank you. And I know that's been really common. I, I do think that Bishop um, adapted Calm Classroom. And I wonder if Washington did too. I wonder if any parents or staff could could answer this question better than me. Washington did. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, so there are a few. Calm Classroom is a really great resource to start with. It's so wonderful. Um, so, um, yeah, Julie's saying, yeah, mindfulness is, yep, yeah, it's very organic. 
organic grassroots. Um, I'm trying to make it. Yeah, I would say that's the most common that it's like here and there and everywhere. <laughs> and um, definitely we're trying to grow it. And I'm trying to build capacity in teachers too and encouraging teachers to do um, the mindful schools training if they're interested. And um, yeah. So Molly, did you have a comment? I see a hand. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt. I just, I wanted to maybe throw in a, an idea. I know mindfulness is very non-tangible. So sometimes it's hard for concrete, you know, kids to get. And, and I do hospice work with the grief camp that, for kids who have uh, lost their family members. And um, so I, for my own kids, I created a mindful tote. I don't know if you can see, it's called calming box. I don't know. And it's like a tangible thing where when I bring it out, there's things like the calming jar yeah. where the you know, and, and just, and of course, just like little prompts. And I feel like um, my kids really respond, my three kids really respond to that because when you can take out a tangible, like some Play-Doh or, or a pinwheel and, and use a blowing, like in and out in mantras, I feel like having a tangible something yep. is kind of nice to help with mindfulness with, with students as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like the Hoberman sphere that I should have it within reach, but I don't, but yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Molly. That's Yep. You, you really, I mean, yeah, I talk about it differently to preschoolers than I talk about it to high school kids. So it's like, it has to change, you know, and I know some coaches are using it with athletes too. So it's, it's definitely, you know, very um, group specific. Darcy says that school counselors love their calming box. Yeah, that's awesome. I've probably gone way over my time. I have no idea. Is anybody, did anybody else have a comment? <laughs> well, thank you, Laura, yeah, so much thank you for so being much. here. Today. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing, I don't want to volunteer you, but you make yourself pretty available to people. What is the best way, if they do this, that they could reach you and, and ask more questions? Yeah, I'll put my email in the chat. Just email me. Um, I've had many one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with people after um, sessions, and I'm super excited to follow up with you and get you started or provide a resource. Um, I have a very um, flexible boss, haha, <laughs> Julian. <laughs> so I can, um, yeah, I am in a position right now that I'm not just attached to one classroom. So I do have some flexibility. So thank you so much. And I, I hope it was helpful in some way. It's just, it's really an honor to speak to this group. Thank you, Laura. And I just thought of another thing. Could you uh, do a shameless plug for your Wednesdays? Oh, yeah, we're doing a, um, so two colleagues, um, Andy Johnsrud, who's a teacher at Mayo High School, and Mary Cunningham is a teacher at Longfellow, um, and they're also been trained with Mindful Schools. We do a Mindful Wednesdays community practice um, through Google Meet um, every Wednesday from um, 3.30 to 3.45. It's super low stakes. You log on, you can keep your camera off the whole time. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> and we just lead like a five to 10 minute practice. And then um, if some people hang out and check in and chat and um, we connect, there's usually between like five and 15 people on the call, but it's, it's really lovely. It's 3.30 um, on Google Meet, code mindful. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much, Laura. <laughs> you are more than welcome to stay. If you need to go, that's fine too. But we're very glad that you're here. And if you would stick your email in the chat, I love that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay. So um, I'm going to move on and just talk you through. Uh, this is the time of the meeting that Melissa usually does some updates for all of you to just be aware of and put these things on your calendars. Please share with your friends, neighbors, colleagues. Um, we are really grateful to anyone who can help us share messaging these days because it's a little bit more difficult to, to get the word out sometimes. So. Um, Let's see here. These are, I have four uh, categories, or I guess Melissa does, and I am just uh, her mouthpiece today. Uh, 
if you didn't, if you weren't already aware, um, we, our school board has determined um, our, our next uh, dates of change for our learning models. And uh, we are in week two right now of our third through fifth graders being back in hybrid. Uh, K-5 will be in hybrid until March 1st, and then um, elementary school students will be back full in person. Grades 6 through 12 are still currently in a distance learning model until April 5th, which I believe is the Monday after spring break. At that point, uh, pending um, all data and information is still the same. Uh, our secondary, which means middle school and high school students, will be back in full person. Just to clarify, uh, our distance learning option is still an option for students that, and families that have chosen that model. So uh, there will continue to be that distance learning option for those students and families that have chosen that. This is a quick, uh, I've been told a very quick survey, whoops, and I'm going to um, post it in the chat. There is a group that has been meeting uh, to talk about college and career readiness, and they are looking for feedback. So I'm going to copy and paste this in the chat right now. And if you would each click on this and um, fill it out. I, I'm told it just takes a couple of minutes. So I'm going to put myself on mute and give you just two minutes to provide some feedback um, on college and career readiness. The group that is meeting uh, is a very collaborative group of uh, community partners, parents, and uh, staff and leadership uh, representing all levels of school, pre-K through grade 12 and is really starting to untangle the web of college and career readiness and how we align this, um, how we garner feedback from uh, families and students uh, so that we can really be supporting students uh, from their very first days with us until the last and helping them realize uh, their future and how they want to interact with the world outside of school. So is it working? I have not taken it yet. Okay, I see a head nod. Thank you so much. If you would maybe just um, give me a thumbs up or something when you are done. Susan, I see that your hand is up. Do you have a question or is that your thumb up? Oh, that must have been from earlier. I should take that down. Okay, no worries.
Lucy, great question. Lucy asked in the chat if this link is shareable. Yes, please do. I think the more we can share it and receive feedback, the better. So feel free to share that link. Thank you, Lucy. What are we doing? Do we need maybe one minute more or is it okay for me to move on? A thumb up, okay, I'm moving on. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. Um, please be watching for any updates uh, to co college and career readiness planning. Um, I'll make sure to let Melissa know that this should be a, a future agenda item to circle back and uh, update you on. Everyone's favorite topic, COVID-19. Uh, here are a few updates uh, that might be helpful for you or for people that you know. Um, I spoke with our one of our COVID coordinators this morning, Jen Erke, and uh, for staff vac vaccinations, um, I should have probably put quotation marks here because she said these words, please be patient, there is a list, there is a plan, vaccinations are coming. Um, they are, we are only able to work with the vaccinations that we receive. Uh, there were a lot that were received last week, not so many right now. And so um, there's a, there is a team in place that is working as hard as they can um, to get these vaccinations out to staff. Um, and also staff, if you haven't read and your emails uh, with updates on uh, COVID-19 vaccination, please do so. It kind of details a little bit about the plan and who's receiving uh, the vaccinations and the different groups of people that are receiving them. And that's very helpful in understanding if you haven't had yours yet, when you could anticipate that vaccination. For our community, uh, a reminder that you can call our community COVID hotline uh, at 328-2822 questions, support and resources. It will, uh, they will answer as the public library, but they are serving as our COVID hotline. And we are grateful to our partners uh, in the county and city and library for providing this resource. Uh, the Rochester Healthy Community Partnership is putting out weekly COVID reminders in the following lang languages. Uh, I put this in the chat earlier and we will send this report, uh, or sorry, this PowerPoint to you. All of these uh, languages are hyperlinked to uh, the, excuse me, weekly COVID reminders in each of these languages. So um, if you are willing and able, if you have friends, family members, colleagues that could use this resource, please share. There's also, uh, the state of Minnesota has recently launched a new hotline specifically for refugees and immigrants uh, to ensure that they have access to accurate and timely information about COVID. Um, that number is listed here on this slide along with the times. And you can see uh, under the bullets, the information that can be accessed through this number. Again, the languages that are available are down below and it's yet another uh, resource that uh, if you're able to share, uh, would be great to share broadly and widely. Julie, we can't see the PowerPoint if that's what you're trying to say. Oh yeah, I'm just clicking away. You can't see my PowerPoint, huh? Because you stopped sharing a while back, I think. Um, I can see it. Oh, I can't see anything then. It's me. Don't mind. I'm sorry, me. Lucy. No, it's all okay then. It's all good. It's me. Forget okay. it. <laughs> I'll make sure that you get it, Lucy, so then you can see it. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what that issue is. But if the rest of you can see it, I'm going to keep moving on. And then I will make sure that others get this so you have this information. Um, moving on to meal kits. Uh, meal kits continue to be distributed at the fairgrounds. 
uh, you can, anyone can receive these meal kits. You can, um, they are intended for children ages um, zero to 18. Um, and uh, they're available on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 5.30 and Fridays from 10 until noon. Uh, you can see here what uh, the meal kits consist of. Um, and also people can serve as a proxy to pick up food for others and deliver to them. So if you have a neighbor or a friend that you know uh, can't make the meal time, the pickup time, or um, they don't have a reliable vehicle or can't, uh, aren't leaving their house because of um, quarantining, it is, is very okay for you to ask for uh, multiple boxes, multiple kits, and uh, deliver those to friends and families, neighbors and colleagues. So please know that that resource exists. Uh, the address is listed on this slide as well. At the very bottom, I put a link. We were very lucky uh, last Friday, this last Friday to partner with Channel One and a organization called Farmers to Families where we were able to hand out 400 family food boxes through Channel One. They consisted of um, uh, meat, uh, dairy products, fresh fruits and vegetables, and gallons of milk. Um, there was a limited number available, but we were able to move all 400 of those food boxes out within our community on Friday. And it was a really cold day too. So it was um, probably some of you were there, came to help and picked up to deliver to some of our families that um, just really didn't want to get out and move around in the cold. This also will be available again tomorrow. Um, our, at our Wednesday meal time, which the time does change on Wednesdays to 3.30 to 5.30. So if you want to go and pick up uh, for families and deliver to them, if you're a staff member, you're more than welcome. Uh, and again, if you're a community member and you want to pick up uh, for your family or for other families that you know, um, please, please do so. I should also say if you have other questions, just please pop in as I'm talking here. I can't see all of you. Um, Julie, I have a clarification about yeah. that. You're saying that the farmers to families resource is available again tomorrow. I am. So that is what I added at the very bottom. Our family meal kits are every Wednesday and Friday, and those come through student nutrition services every Wednesday and Friday. And then you can see the very bottom is a, our partnership with Channel One. We had a delivery this past Friday and then another delivery tomorrow. Uh, with a limited number, and that is that partnership. Is that, that makes sense? Yeah. Is that number going to be the same as it was last week? Number of boxes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So roughly, I think it was roughly 400 boxes that we received and were able to move, and they are um, on a first come first serve basis. So if you do want to get there and pick up for families, you are encouraged to do so. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for clarifying. Julie, this is Lindy Lang. Um, hey, Lindy. Will, will the um, RPS meal kits, are those going to be on Wednesdays and Fridays in the month of March as well? Has that been determined? That has not been determined. That's a great question. I can check and see um, what they're planning. Um, this has changed month to month as we're trying to add the second meal time and all of that. So. Um, I don't know yet, Lindy, I'm sorry okay. about March, but I will, I'll put it on the list and try to get that information out to all of you as soon as possible. Um, time again, tomorrow, tomorrow, Wednesday's food pickup is from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. I did talk to Sherry, our coordinator of student nutrition services, and she said, we're probably seeing equal numbers of people picking up on um, during our daytime on Friday and our evening time on Wednesdays. I'm sorry, yes, evening time on Wednesdays. She said maybe a few more people on Wednesdays. So um, very grateful to Student nutri Nutrition Services for their flexibility in um, having some different meal times for, for people to pick up. Julie, one, one more point of clarification. The Farmers yes. to Families, that's tomorrow. Is that yes. from 3.30 to 5.30? Yes, that's in collaboration with our food pickup. I'm going to move on. Feel free to put other questions in the chat.
Um, moving on to our mental health supports and resources. We just can't talk enough about this right now and share uh, information about this. And, and Laura's presentation is a piece of, of this as well. Um, Rochester Public Schools um, is offering um, 45 minute appointment sessions with mental health providers if you are um, in need of that service. So um, there is a link here uh, for you to schedule with, um, with a mental health provider and um, access that resource as one of them. It is free of charge. And then this slide, um, I'm not gonna click on it, but this um, hyperlink here is to the district's uh, well, mental health and well-being page, which offers a lot of other resources. So please feel free, again, like everything in our presentation to not only read this for yourself, but please share with people that you know. Um, sometimes right now, it's not necessarily that we don't have the resources, it's just that people maybe don't know about them. And then uh, before we close up tonight, uh, this month is uh, Black History Month. And I, I'm sorry to Will Ruffin and Lita Casper, I didn't give you a heads up on this. I just added this at the very last minute and I'm crossing my fingers that you will feel free to pop in. But there's some really wonderful things happening right now across the district to celebrate Black History Month. Um, Gage and Riverside are just two sites that are recognizing the importance of this month and the importance of um, our students and families, our leaders and our community members being celebrated not only in the month of February, but always. And I just wanted to share uh, some really cool things that have been happening here. Um, Gage and Riverside had a really, um, is having some really great success with their uh, virtual bookshelf. So, would either of you, I'm sorry I didn't check with you ahead of time, would either of you be willing to share a little bit more about what you're doing to celebrate and recognize Black History Month? Is Mr. Yeah, Rock not? Know, yeah, go ahead, I, good. I can speak. Um, you know, I think a lot of people since the summer I've been struggling with different things around racial and social justice and everything that entails in that conversation, right? So the first thought was to let's highlight some positive things that are going on in the black community right here in Rochester, just to try to counter that narrative a little bit. Okay, show people that, I mean, there's just normal, regular black people in our community just doing awesome things all the time, every day. We should be celebrated every day not only when a tragedy happens and it makes the news and it's in the headlines. So that's what we wanted to do. We started contacting different people and say, hey, would you be willing to read a book to our kids? Um, just so our kids can see someone that looks like them reading, right? So that's, that's pretty much where the whole thing came from. Um, our first highlight was uh, Carol Merrill, who is an educator here at Gage. And she read the, the story Hair Love, but she tied it to her own identity and struggling with um, her hair growing up, being a biracial person, and the struggle with wanting to have what society has named a mainstream look. So she tied that book in, and her message was to all the kids, especially with those who are struggling with their identity tied to their hair, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to be you, like you are perfect just the way you are. And I just think that it's great that that message can come from someone right here in our community. It doesn't have to be a celebrity or anyone that someone looks up to. We got people right here doing great things. And to me, that's what Black History Month is about. It's about celebration and not so much all the, the trauma focused things, you know. That's it. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Anything to add, Lita? I think he covered it, but can I just say that <laughs> I have to share this part because it's I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fangirl. I hate to say it. Um, we one of the people that we had asked uh, to read is Attorney General Keith Ellison. He's 
the highest ranking uh, member of government, um, black member of government, uh, obviously in the state of Minnesota. And he read um, Let the Children March and just did like a beautiful um, narration. I mean, he was just so, it was amazing. So anyway, that one, that one is up right now as well. We haven't highlighted that on social media yet, mostly because it's hard to do such a, a guy like that justice who's had, um, you know, who's just so incredible. So anyway. And your resource, um, I, I put the link to the Riverside resource. Maybe Will, you could talk about where it can be found on Gage and is this available for anyone to utilize? Well, actually we're in the, in the midst now of combining the site so that it'll be one okay. site for people to access. Um, I just want to acknowledge one more thing that this was meant to be a supplement to the learning that's already occurring in the classroom. It should not be the only thing that people go to for Black History Month. It should not only be acknowledged in February. We should be teaching about all different cultures all throughout the year. And I just think if kids can start learning about each other and appreciating the good in each other at a very young age, we wouldn't be at this point where we are today in our community where people can say that I'm, I'm just nervous about having the conversation. I don't know how to have conversations. So let's teach them young and let's teach them often. Um, and I can add to the accessibility part. So we, uh, because of fair use copyright, we we can't just share the books widely. Um, and so they are only accessible to people who have a Rochester Public Schools uh, email address. But we do have like the, the ones that we share, the the pieces that we share on social media of each, um, each person highlighted, um, those are available, but we can't legally share the share the book. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. But if our students have an email, a school email address, can they access that? Yes, yes. Yep, awesome. anyone with an RPS Google account can. Okay, great. Um, before we move on to the next, thank you both for sharing. Um, before we move on, I just wondered if I wanna open it up to anyone else that is doing anything right now within your sites, your community, your home to recognize Black History Month. Feel free to put that in the chat too, if you don't wanna. Hey, I can speak for Lincoln quickly because I'm also yeah. a Lincoln parent. Um, one of the things that Lincoln's done, they have multiple pictures throughout the hallway and the pictures have a QR code on them. So as students are in the hallway, they can scan the QR code with their iPad and then they will have um, someone read that particular book to them. In a, another part of the hallway, they have different events or different people, a quiz where they have to figure out the clue and that ties into Black history. And they, they put their answers in into a form. And then in, any student who completes that form gets you know entered into a drawing of some sort. But I think the, the powerful thing is when you see students working together to try to figure out some of the pieces, um, I think that's pretty powerful. Um, last year when I was there, when they did this, I remember a black girl walking down in the hallway and then she just stood there and she smiled because she saw that on the wall and she said, this is about me. And we just said, absolutely. Right. So for that moment in time, she was spot on, you know, she saw herself reflected. And I just think we have to do this all the time for all of our kids. Yeah. Thank you, Will. And really, you know, as we, especially educators um, and parents too, as we look at different resources that we're buying from the bookstore, from Amazon, that our kids are watching, I think you said it so perfectly, Will, when you talked about uh, celebrating every kid and what makes every kid and every human special and, and letting students see themselves represented, different abilities. Um, letting that representation be seen in, in the ways that students are accessing material uh, is so important now more than ever. So thank you uh, to any anyone out there that has been um, stretching yourself, um, that's committed to, to doing this work, to, to making students and families uh, more visible and celebrating the uniqueness and the uh, beautifulness of each human being. Uh, we see it and we want to see more of it. So thank you. All right. Um, look at it. It's back to Julie hosting and I'm taking you right up to 11 o'clock. Melissa's going to be uh, not surprised at all.
So if you're still hanging in there with us, uh, thank you for being here today. The last thing that we'll do um, in the chat is um, one word. So I need to better understand blank or one thing I learned today, blank, and this is not really a quiz. So if you put more than one word, that's okay too. If you'd please just enter something in the chat. No one's learned anything? Okay, great, awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Initiatives, relaxing, calming down, mindfulness as a superpower, celebrating humans. Awesome, what a great way to end. So thanks to all of you. Um, yeah, Leah, all the great things that are happening right now. Uh, they, there are those things out there. So thanks for everyone. thanks to everyone for being here today. Enjoy your day. Uh, if you find yourself uh, being triggered, uh, take 10 breaths or shut your screen off for a few seconds. Uh, the work will always be there, but you and your health are more important. So thank you. Have a great day.